No machines were hurt in the making of this video. Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my lathe channel. A couple of weeks ago I did two flawless iron castings for my Shelblin 125 CNC conversion. But while I was machining that first casting, unfortunately the moths got into the second one. So I need to fill the voids. Oxy liquid metal. Are you also curious as to whether this stuff really works for filling holes and damage to metal parts? Does it even look like metal? Stick around, let's see. And last week I cast and machined this motor mount plate. I also made the casting for the replacement x-axis motor at the same time, so let's go machine that, shall we? First operation, I'm just going to clean up these ears, give them a nice flat surface to clamp against. So first I just drew a sketch, padded that out, made the one mounting hole, made a pattern out of it, added the pocket for the motor to go into, added its uh, mounting hole, and also a polar pattern for that hole. And that's it. It's a pretty simple part. Okay, that's not going to work because that cutter would go straight across taking out this clamp. So I'll switch out and use just the small 20mm cutter to rough that out. When I reposted it, I told it to use 20mm end mill. But see here, it's assigned tool number one, end mill 20. But if I look at my tool table, tool number one is my 100mm face mill. The 20mm end mill is tool number 6, so I need to change that in my cam software to tell it the correct location for that. Okay, there's my conditional stop. It should be 50mm above the part. Okay, it's not. So something's wrong with the offset. Shut it down, check all the offsets. Okay, I now realize why that offset was off. This material is 26 thick. I use a 16 millimeter old broken end mill shank as my touch off tool. This is my reference zero. So I set that to 16 millimeters above it, but then I typed 26 mil in. That's why I was 10 millimeters off there. Let's just check that again. Let's go up out of the way. Set the feed rate over right, right down and it should start moving away to the tool change position. Stop it there. Distance to go, 70 millimeters. Okay, it's not going to hit. That should be 50. Okay, now it's correct. I am in awe at the machining in modern jet engines. If you look at a component like the fan hub frame, you have an incredibly complex titanium structure with about a zillion tolerance features on it. I wonder how many man hours go into developing and proofing the fixturing, tool choice and the tool paths. It seems I can't even do a part as simple as this without mistakes. When they were prototyping that, Imagine the pucker factor of being the machinist who has to machine the last setup on a one and a half million dollar part. Well, there's the rough machining finished. Let's take it out and have a bit closer look at the shop of horrors. Well, that casting is looking fantastic. Louis, you liar! Yeah, 
Except for that corner. I think the iron worm got into it a little. It looks pretty ugly and I should probably just throw it out or melt it back down. But I'm kind of curious as to what it looks like when you put in the metal epoxy. So I think I'll do that and then do the fine machining afterwards and see whether it can rescue a bad casting or whether it's a waste of time. To make the epoxy stick, I've sandblasted the whole area, taken the remains of the slag out of it. This is the product I've decided to use. Don't know if it's good or not, but let's give it a go. Oh, that's cute. They give you a little bit of sandpaper, but sandblaster's already done that job. Lots hardened, so let's make up some more. All right, well that's now cured overnight in the oven. It looks good, it didn't sag down much. The paper will just machine out. Yeah, so what do you think that's gonna look like once it's machined? Since you might be wondering, my face mill might be too big for this job at 100 millimeters, and my next size down mill is a 20. I wanted something in between, so I decided to try out the boring bar as a fly cutter, and I think it did pretty well. It's slow as molasses, but it does make a nice surface finish. Okay, I had to e-stop that. Can you hear the clicking? Those are the gearbox relays. Now the gearbox isn't changing. Haven't had that before. The three shifters on the Mahu gearbox are color coded when they're in gear. See this one's not showing a color. So what I'm guessing is it's, it was between gears and therefore the, the twitching which is used as the main motor, that stopped here, and one of the others was jammed, maybe. So let's give it a speed command, at a 2000. Yeah, it looks like that was the problem. For whatever reason, it got stuck between gears here and then couldn't move on to the other ones. At least what I'm guessing. I'll keep an eye on it, it's never happened before.
Well, there's the first operation finished. I can't really say that stuff looks that metal colored. It's more sort of a gray. You can see the drill deflect really badly because it obviously had a metal on one side and only epoxy on the other. So that hole's well off center. When I flip it, just put an end mill down to, to straighten up that hole from the other side. These are oversized holes for belt tensioning. So it doesn't really matter that that's lost a bit of meat there. When the motor goes in, it'll cover a lot of the ugliness. So I don't think I'll recast this. I'll probably just use it as is. Next up, goodbye clamping ears. Those bits can go back in the pot. I think the problem I made here was I just underestimated how much I have to take off here. So I thought I was closer to the edge than I was. No harm done. I checked the insert. It didn't get chipped out. I just had to reset the part in the clamps. Reposted the file to move this right off the edge of the work before starting. And now uh, hopefully it should be fine. I didn't notice this movement in real time. It's only once editing that I could see it. But that does explain why the fly cutting on that second surface was so chattery and squealy as opposed to the first one. One problem with the Maho's 18-speed gearbox is that you can't do any RPM override during a cut. And I had this significantly too fast, so it's turned into a bit of a chattery mess. I think once it's finished, I'll throw this on the lathe and just clean up the surface a bit. So I just need to bore out that hole in the right location. Well, last defects came to light while machining, so let's fog them up as well. Since I've done the final machining, I'll bog these and then just hit them with a file to bring them down to size. So 
So I've switched now from a double cut to a single cut file. Single cut files and draw fi when draw filing make a much nicer surface finish. As long as you don't get anything stuck in the teeth. That's why I put chalk on it. Well, there's my finished part. So what do I think of the liquid metal? Well, it's not very metallic looking, it's just grey. Still, I guess it does its job. Can't really complain. So would I buy it again? Yeah, I guess I would. There might be other versions of this which are a better colour match for a cast iron, but it does what it's supposed to. If I wanted it perfect, I should have recast it. But now I've got so much work into it, I'm not going to start again. Once everything's installed, the motor sits back here, behind the saddle, so I mean it's well out of the way. It's pretty enough for that. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this, please share it with somebody.